Tank Nerds Lottie here again. No doubt from the thumbnail or title, you know that we're talking about this bad boy, which is a sea mine. To my knowledge, it is a, well, it's genuine, whatever it is. Um, to my knowledge, it is a Mark 17 uh, British contact mine. Don't know 100%, but I'm like 90% sure. Um, funnily enough, I don't know a lot about sea mines um, because I've never had to interact with them until now. So, um, before I go full in depth about the restoration job that we've done on it, uh, I'm going to go over what uh, we did to actually find it. So, uh, this belongs to a friend of ours uh, who we do a lot of restoration work for anyway. and. Um, this was a week-long restoration, so it was only a week ago, Saturday, um, that we got a call from uh, our friend. He bought a sea mine for yeah, not, not a lot of money because it was in a very poor condition. In fact, it was being used as a plant planter, like a pot. So basically there was trees <laughs> growing out of the top. Um, I'll be interlaying video and pictures of this stuff as I talk. So um, yeah, there was a tree growing out of this only, I don't know, like two weeks ago. Uh, she is moving house, I believe, the previous owner, moving house. Don't know the full story. We were told that 30 years ago, this mine washed up on the beach near here can't find the exact like records or anything but more than a few people have said that's what's happened um i'll just take it as it is but yeah that's what we were told 30 years ago this washed up on the shore don't know what condition it washed up in the shore but it was certainly pretty rusty from what we can tell i don't know to what extent they deactivated what was left um if you ask me, this was a fully operational mine, and I can prove it. <laughs> um, so yeah, it was an original working sea mine, and at some point I believe it's rusted out, and it's washed up on shore, and they've either taken what was dangerous out of it, or it was completely rusted out anyway. So. We had a lovely little trip just around the corner, uh, went to the lovely lady's house, found the sea mine, um, extracted it <laughs> from the garden, which was fun. Um, Show pictures, rolling it out, and video, rolling it out. Uh, it was very rusty. I wasn't sure we were gonna actually be able to do too much with it. So yeah, we, uh, we helped it out, got rid of all the bugs too. That was fun. And then uh, we yeah, drove back in a groovy little military-esque convoy, uh, which was very comical, having a sea mine in the back. Then the work begins. So I will show you what it looks like now, and I'll talk about how it's all come to be. Here is the sea mine in all of its glory. So uh, Peter has made up a little carriage for it. Initially we were just going to do the restoration job on the sea mine itself um, and then uh, the owner wanted a little carriage to go along with it and I think it's really groovy and it's really set it apart now so it's quite um it's quite the looker. Now to be perfectly honest with you the markings don't really mean anything um, they're just to give it a little bit of character Although the Mark 17 on this side, from pictures that I've seen, is fairly similar to what's on uh, other mines. Again, I'm like 90% sure that this is a Mark 17. Don't know. Sea mines are not my speciality. Go figure. So, um, yeah, when we got it, it looked like this, rusty. And then it looks like this, all clean. First things first, this is a contact mine, which means that obviously the ships need to make contact. None of these horns were intact uh, when we got it. Um, in fact, they seem to have all been rusted out or had been purposely removed, but not completely 
which we'll get to in a second. So, a uh, quick little Google search, um, and because we're doing this in a week and trying to like really push it out because we have lots of other vehicles to work on, um, these were basically a groovy, quick way of being able to make it look the part, make it look good enough, um, but also removable. So uh, the bottom was the least rusted bit, which was here, which coincidentally is where it was actually buried. So all of this, um, it was actually buried to here. Um, when the trees were growing in it. But this, um, it looks like the dirt actually preserved more of the bottom than the top. So this is what the bottom was like. And we made up a plate just to bolt onto the bottom. If you unbolt that, you can actually access the inside of the uh, sea mine. I did paint the inside, um, not black, just primer, just so it um, uh, doesn't rust anymore. And we sealed up um all around here so it is mostly waterproof um that being said we have put a little drainage hole um in there just in case the top was completely rusted out um so it came up just a little bit more but we had the lid which was really nice um from what we've been talking to other people uh, the lids are missing on theirs. So quite fortunate to have the lid on this one. Um, then we made up a ring and this is bolted to the lid and then I welded um, the lid onto it so you can see some of the welds there. I just welded the lid and then the rest we just did with Celastic to make sure it's nice and um, watertight. Oh, waterproof, whatever. So yeah, there was a fair bit of um, struggling just just to get the lid on. Uh, but once that was done, it's pretty straightforward. Now we did have to extract some things, including this. To my knowledge, and I really don't see any other reason why, um, this is where the explosives were. And of course it is completely rusted out. Um, if it did detonate, it doesn't look like it. This looks predominantly just like rust sort of damage, but who knows? Uh, again, I'm not an expert on explosives in the water. So uh, these rods here are used to hold um, this in place. So it sits in like so, and there's three of those. The other two are still inside here. I'll show the video showing those and they just hold it in place. Now from there, as I understand it, the fuse goes in here, um, or rather the wiring goes in here. The wires come out, 11 of them. There are 11 um, what you call Hertz fuses. Um, I'll explain how those work, but that is what makes them contact mines. Um, these are, sorry, Hertz horns. There we go. You call them horns. Um, I believe they were invented by an Italian. Um, I might give a history lesson on them later, but I can explain how they work in a little bit. Um, but yeah, so we had that and we had three of those, but one of them was just completely rusted out. So, um, we removed it. Now, um, to make the horns as cheaply and as effectively as possible, I made up um, these little things, which, um, the, the, and this one's a really rough one, just as a uh, an example. Uh, it's also a little bit crooked, but whatever. Um, all it is is just a couple of end caps from a fence post on a piece of rotter bar, and then you've I clean them all up uh, so they don't look so shabby. And drill in the bottom, uh, this is a bolt, so, um, and then I've welded the bottom of the bolt onto it. Then you put a plate on this side, and you tension them up, and there you have it. You've got yourself a cheap, effective horn that definitely doesn't look like a pipe bomb. <laughs> so yeah, um, that's how we did those. And they work pretty effectively, uh, and they are on really nice and tight. We've actually lifted them off. 
uh, lifted the sea mine with the horns and they work really effectively. So um, these work using essentially what is, they're supposed to be like a lead sleeve. These are pretty well identical to the, like the length. They might be a little bit longer and there should be an extra rib in the middle. But these are a lead, should be a lead horn with a glass case on the inside. Think of like a, um, I don't know, like a tulip vase or something, but like a really small one, uh, like, like a beaker. And inside is sulfuric acid. Now, when the ship comes along and goes bonk, because it's lead and really easily malleable and probably the reason why they're all torn off. Um, they break instantly, shattering the glass and the sulfuric acid runs down into, and this is how I know that this one was mostly active, these. Unfortunately, we had to cut, cut them off. Um, this is one that I cleaned up and here are the other ones, for example's sake. So this sits, if you can imagine, on the bottom of the horn like so. I'll just turn down the radio so I don't get copyright struck or anything like that. Um, so yeah, when the sulfuric acid breaks, it runs down and it mixes with the internals here. This is the better part of what is essentially a rudimentary battery. So once the acid interacts with that, a little electric charge is generated and it's enough to go down these wires. Here's a more rough one. It's just got the wires still attached. Um, so this goes in there and then the acid breaks. It comes down, reacts with this, turns this into a little battery and then the charge goes along this cable and then into here. So the big long cable that comes out of this and it goes woo into the top there. And that is how you detonate um, your TNT. I read somewhere that some of them had like 100% TNT and others they run like 20% TNT and other stuff, you know, just to sort of fill it in. I don't know. Um, that's more history uh, when I do another full end if I do another in-depth video I don't know if you like sea mines let me know and I can do more of these sort of videos but what's really cool about these going back to it, this one in particular and the reason I haven't cleaned it up is because if you can see that little bit of glass there that's some of the remaining um, bits of like tulip glass so the way these worked is that this little sleeve here is where the glass sat. So it would shatter and it would immediately mix with these. This one was extractable and I've cleaned it up and I think it makes a groovy little trophy. So yeah, these are essentially the, I guess, detonators, um, but they're essentially just batteries um, that detonate the uh, explosive. So yeah, that is, how we went about restoring the sea mine and then Peter made up some trolleys we, we had these little railway um, wheels lying around it's interesting actually because again learning so much about sea mines they actually dump these overboard with the carriages still attached the carriages aren't as intricately made as this this is a display piece and i don't think they were made out of wood they were like made out of steel and all that sort of rubbish but we thought we might make them nice and you know tidy and they've got these little tie down points and they're really cute um but yeah the whole lot was just pushed overboard um and they would come free of the carriage and the carriage would just fall to the bottom of the sea which um pretty wasteful but whatever have you um, yeah, I think it's really cool. Um, I don't think I will be working on a sea mine again. Uh, so I always take these opportunities as they arise. And there we have it. Ooh, blinded by the light. So yeah, there we have it, sea mine. Really cool. I'm really happy about it. Uh, I think it came up beautifully. I'm going to make a little plaque just to put on the, um, put on the end of it just 
for uh, restoration sake, um, explaining what it is. But uh, yeah, if anyone actually has any full knowledge, like you can actually tell me what model and mark this is, let me know because I have already painted <laughs> which mark it is because I'm 90% sure this is a mark 17. Correct me if I'm wrong and link to me the source um, if you think I'm wrong. And then I'll go back and paint this <laughs> over. Otherwise, it's going to its new home where it will be on display and it's going to look ever so lovely. I'm actually really sad about this. I kind of want to keep it myself because it's just so cool. Um, yep, I think that'll do. So yeah, that is the wonderful adventures of the sea mine. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know. Um, leave lots of comments down below and I don't know, subscribe for more sea mine content. No more see my content unless